Hey there, there, guys. I'm just about to put my hat on to rescue me looking like a bag of fucking shit. But I'm just trying to find... I need to go and have a shower. It's got to that point now where I have physically, hygienically left myself. Um, because I've had two periods. And I know full well that I was on um, when I did the car boot. And then, and this has been happening for pretty much, my, my periods have been so damn irregular all the way through my life because I started my periods very, 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 very young. And the reason that I started very young was because obviously I was molested as a child. And we've got all of these terms and all of these words like sexual abuse victim, abuse and all of this stuff, but it doesn't actually cut to the core of exactly what has gone on. And I'm watching the media saying, so there's a Russian who's got two grenades in his hands and he's telling everyone to surrender and they're calling the Ukrainian brave, right? Hello there, uh, Katrina. Now, if you go back to the video that I did watching the two students being arrested with all of those police, if, if you, you go, yes, I'm back, right? I'm not going to go all para and say it gets intercepted. I'm just going to stick with good old, good old signal and technology interrupting. And that's how I would rather see things at the moment, because it would completely change my entire headspace if I thought that the website that was sitting there that is in my name, it's not even my name, it's my ex-husband's name. So if you want to talk about the true Kelly Cotton, do you at least want to pick one of my original names? That would be amazing. Um, you'd probably even help me because I'm still trying to decide myself. Um, so yeah, I would rather just think it's a signal problem. So anyway, um, when you've got a mother, so say you're in your home and, uh, or dad, or dad, say, say dad's got access to the kids that weekend. I don't even like that word. He's just being a dad. So take two separated parents or take two parents together or take two parents together and one is at work and one is at home. It doesn't matter. But imagine you being in your normal everyday life and you might have even just come home from school. You might, it might be a weekend. It might be an evening day. You might have a child off sick. Um, you, it could just be any normal day. And then all of a sudden there's a knock on the door and there's two police officers and two social workers. And all of a sudden you go into what's called fight or flight. And this is what everybody is missing to do with Ukrainian. Now, at the end of the day, there is a guerrilla warfare. I've, I've explained to you that as countries, so think of United Nations, think of United Nations trying to get the whole world to work together. So we are divided up into, as you know, Asia, Africa. Uh, so what are we? It, so it's it's originally, so the, we're the West. So we're the Westerns. I find it really funny that we're classed as the West. We're the Westerners when I'm a Southerner. So here in the UK, I'm officially a Southerner. So that's the UK. That's England. So we've got, you know, the, 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 the shape of England, not quite like that, but, you know, the shape of England. And I'm right here down at the bottom in Portsmouth, which is a Navy base. As you know, I went down to the church the other day and I work, that's how I work. So I don't get paid. I don't get up this morning out of my bed and get on a uniform and go to work for somebody, okay? I don't go to Tesco's and stack shelves. I don't go to Asda and work behind the counter. I don't work down at the pharmacy. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a firewoman. I'm not an army. I'm not, um, uh, I don't go out with the bin men. I'm not a construction worker. I'm not part of putting uh, wireless into the system. I'm not electronically trained. I'm not a technology person. Um, I'm not an investor, so to say. I invest my time, okay? I don't have the cash to invest, but I have my time. Now, the thing with my body is while I'm currently sitting here now, if I was to clench my fists together, Right, we're back. I've come outside. Now, the irony, okay? The woman that is seated, I'm going to show her. Well, she's got another woman with her, so I don't want to. But I'll show the actual woman who's doing it. Now, I've got a feeling that this woman might have known me in the media. 
I only actually know her because I met her at a play center, okay? And we got talking. So, but good people sorting toys out, stuff for charity. We've got uh, bin men there that are coming to pick up all the bin things that are out and about. Um, I don't want to get the lady who's getting in the car, but she knows I'm up here, so she's gone in now. Um, yeah, she'll be catching up on my lives later. Now, <clears throat> at the end of the day, if I clench my fist, yeah, you just see a clenched fist. Now, do you ever remember as a child, and there's a reason that I want to talk about my hands, body, because what you don't see is what I feel. Now, sometimes when you look at my hands, now my friend will get this, is we say we have what's called man hands, and it means all the veins, and now because I've been holding this phone, it might do it. Now, okay, so we get, as you know, can you see my wrists? So I would love to be going with the team that are going over to Bosnia and to the border of Korea, uh, uh, Ukraine, right? And the reason that I would really like to because I want to make sure that parents are making the right decision at this particular point. Nobody should ever make a decision in winter. Never cut down a tree in winter. You don't cut down trees in winter. Trees can be damaged during winter and then there is a clean up, but you don't cut official trees down in winter. Pruning is always done in the right time. Planting seeds is done in the right time. We have seasons for a reason. And the reason that we have these seasons is because I don't know why we have these seasons. Do we have the why do I? Yeah, I do know why we have these seasons. Because seeds have to grow. There's a gestation period. And it's like an idea. You can have a thought and an idea and the time that it takes to go into fruition. So say I went to the person of the church. I don't have the funding, okay, to do what it is that I, I, I like to do. However, I don't work for these people. These people don't even know me. None of the people that I'm posting out now will even know that I am even planting seeds behind them. They won't know. All they know is they got a call three days ago and they've all jumped to it. They've been given the money and obviously the funds are coming in pretty quickly. They're up to 19,000 right now for about five, five people, I think that are going to be literally going over. Now we've got the Navy thing, so they're not going to be going over on normal planes. Um, they will go over with, with obviously the Air Force, Army, Navy. The reason being is because civilians will clench a fist. Untrained fighters will clench a fist, okay? A trained fighter knows to put their thumb on the other side. An untrained fighter will punch like this. Some of them might even realise, now your thumb wouldn't usually do this. This is because I have an EDS thumb, as you know. My thumb literally sublocks in and out. First person anybody is trained to do in any defence is pull up and attack your arm behind you. So that would be a police officer. Any woman who has ever been in what they label as domestic violence, so that is a violent relationship in a domestic situation, hence why it has that label, domestic violence. Grievously bodily harm, actual body harm, okay? But what this doesn't tell is the trauma. What this doesn't explain is the fight and flight and the trauma that it causes in a person. And it can put you in an absolute weave of a web in your light, mind. And then what you do is you lie to yourself. And you lie to yourself in such a way because it safeguards you from putting yourself in a situation that you're going to go into. Garden cane has just been added near you. I need this. Hang on two seconds. Oh, I can't go on to it. Sorry, Ola's just flashed up to say garden cane's just been added on the list and I really need some garden cane. Or I need some bamboo stuff to try to build up so I don't have to see my neighbour every day. But the problem is, is I'm investing my time into a temporary fix and a solution, which is this property, and it doesn't work, okay? So my aim was to be out of here by the 31st of March. Now, look how quickly that's come together when you've got a budget. So literally went to the church. Someone said, no, we haven't got one. I don't listen to the first person. There was three people there and I knew out of them three people that one person would know something. One down, no information. Second one, straight away, I decided to stick with the first piece of information I was given, which was the family, uh, sorry, Friends Without Borders. Friends Without Borders is the bridging. So the email behind it, the bank account is all under 
Friends Without Borders. So then obviously DSM Medical is behind that. Um, as you know, Stephen Morgan jumped on it and his exact words to government were, you need to step up for Ukraine. OK, so that was Britain, step up for Ukraine. Now, I've always said you've got to step up for Russia, too. And the reason that they should be stepping up for Ukraine is not to protect them from Russia. Had Russia been left, Putin, had Putin and his team, not his civilian team, his... Sorry. Never don't like it. Um... And so had him, him and his militant team gone in to do what they were going to do, what people don't realise is back in 2014, I the Ukrainian, I can't, you're going to have, unless I sit there with an actual map, I've got to be careful as well because I get mixed up. The Chelsea football manager who's currently putting Chelsea up for sale for something like 300 million, million, million. He's like really saying, right, fine, you want to kick us Russians out. I own your football club and I will put it up for sale and... You, you you watch the Emirates buy it, yeah? So at the end of the day, England is going to sit there. You're not going to see the consequences of lockdown until next Christmas, yeah? You're not going to see the fact that Sainsbury's have now got to let people go. You're not seeing the fact that Debenham's got shut down and people have gone. These people are in their own homes right now, battling as a family, sitting down with their husbands and their family, crying their eyes out, probably too proud to go to the job centre and sign off for universal credits, probably borrowed quite a little bit of money off maybe their dad or their mum or one of their in-laws, probably got their family to crowdfund to help them out to keep the mortgage. If you've ever seen the film... Um, Dick and Jane, you will see what it can go like when people are in a recession or they're indicted or they lose their money. Please don't think that some of these people that are losing their big ships don't necessarily mourn for them. Not everybody that dies is somebody that we should mourn and grieve and, and may they rest in peace. Some people don't deserve to be on this planet and unfortunately some of the things that they do are so damn horrible that they have to be removed and they won't be removed by any other way. But that's not to go for the really great, wonderful people that do cross over. And this is where polarity exists. There are people who will talk to you with a fist back. The ones that pull their fist back ain't the ones that's going to hit you. With somebody like me, with my shoulder, there. Oh, that's actually just gone back in. Thanks, guys. I just actually got my shoulder back in while talking to you. That was really cool. Did you hear it? I'm apparently faking this. So the challenge is, is everybody has gaslighted the Ukrainians and forced them to run. That's gaslighting. That's going, that's like, take, for example... My neighbour's going through an absolute heart attack, right? He has actually come home drunk and he's pushed his missus around and they've been married 10 years and she's left. But the thing is, the police got involved and he said, all of a sudden she's gone. I don't understand why she's gone. You know, why are we not talking about this? Why are we not fixing this? And I've said, because she'd be under victim support and they will move her and they will do this and you will now be the person that she's not allowed to talk to. He's devastated that his wife has now become some uh, city witch and uh, lesbian and left him. And I've said, you've got two choices as a husband. You step up as a husband and you pray for your wife and you go and you be your husband or you let your wife go. And the thing is, within this system, the problem is, is they will say, in this system, they will say, Oh, it's domestic violence. You've got to move. You've got to leave him. You've got to go. One in four men end up killing their wives. They create a fear. And this is how divide and conquer starts. This is how the fact that the man goes out to work, the woman stays at home, the children are put into education facilities. The divide and conquer has already started. The moment a parent hands over their children at the school gates, we have lost our children for who they are and they become the dogmatic system uh, education system that they need to condition our children to be, such as joining the slave system. If somebody wants to create art, they should create art. Every single one of us started off as children who were artists, dancers, musicians, talented. Every child had some form of talent that they wanted to show off. And most of those things are the after school club activities. 
And that's where we should be investing our time. So for me, I am literally at the moment now, and I've told Dean, mate, I've told Dean, you get diagnosed with a child who's got EDS, mate, and you neglect their plan, I'm going to make it so you go to fucking prison. Literally, sit your ass in prison because you didn't take your kids swimming. Sit your ass in prison because you didn't help and enable a child with balance issues to ride a bike. I am going to sit your ass in fucking prison if you meet a woman or a man who tells you that they have this particular condition, which is Erlos-Danlos syndrome, hypermobility Erlos-Danlos syndrome, whatever spectrum you are of the rare disease disorders, every single person with these rare diseases, and it should exist for anything. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter whether your past thoughts and residual actions have caused cancer in your body. It doesn't matter whether your past thoughts and residual actions have caused for you to have a fucking car crash. It doesn't matter whether your past thoughts and residual actions have caused for you to trap your finger in a fucking thing. It doesn't matter whether your past thoughts and actions have put you in a situation that have created the situation around you it's where you go from your new thoughts and actions and this is where the system fails because it's all about bureaucracy and paperwork and health and safety and insurance policies and making sure you can write down a plan do you really think somebody's going to be standing by all these people making sure they write down absolutely everything And this is why the police wear body cameras. And this is why people like me fall into using my lives to protect me in situations where police, RSPCA, social workers or anything are at my door. I need to make phone calls to people and I'm so good at phone calls and I'm so good at going up. If I hadn't have tucked the phone here and lived while doing it, you wouldn't have known how I do things. So when you see all these things, you wouldn't see how Stephen Morgan was mentioned in it. Stephen Morgan then went and set off the letter to step up. That then created for the parent network to be pulled in. Then parent networks have decided that, yes, they might be civilian, but they're willing to either um, join the forces and pick up the gun. And it's about picking up that gun. It's about picking up that gun. Someone like me could be really damaged. The reason that I have such complex uh, trauma when it comes to people being opposed to me in conflict is because if someone, poof, my head, there goes the whiplash on my neck. As Stephen has done, and I have had to cowl over, he's ended up on the other hand, a big lump right up the top of my hand, smashed all my hand in. I still have damage in this hand from having to fight back on one particular occasion. Um, And as I've told Stephen, it doesn't matter. This is when you'll realise that men and women are not fucking equal and we are different. This is when women need to step back and realise we've got so snow. We've got snowflake men. We have. And this is the problem with society. We've created snowflake men and we've taken out the real man in them because us women are too scared of a man who puts us in our place. And we don't like it, okay? Because the world has created this whole forum of men who hit women and if man hits woman. Now, Dean said something the other day because obviously Eleanor has been rough playing with Dean and I won't say much because everyone will jump on it and write things in a way that you know causes problems to my darling little dog which isn't a problem to Dean and it isn't a problem to us as a family Dean was playing with a stick with her so um at the end of the day the UK is the only real country that has the power to remove children against the the authority of the parent. We sign a birth certificate that gives us the responsibilities to our children, but it doesn't make them our property and it doesn't mean that we own them and it doesn't mean that they are ours. They were created in our womb and they were created by the father's seed, but they are not our property, so to say. They're not ours. They're our family and those are our duty. But this is their where now what I'm going to court to do, and not a lot of people are going to like me. And that means because it is very, 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 very easy for somebody like me to become bedbound. Very easy. So I will take you through just two seconds from, in my socks, the facts, if you watch my feet, okay? So this is, this is my feet, 
Yeah. This is my feet. And now if I was to stand up, I am completely flat footed. Okay. So the first thing in the morning for somebody like me, I cry in the morning sometimes. I lay here in the mornings and I just wish. And I'm very early riser, by the way. My head is up, half past five, on the fucking dot, wants to go out, do its Pilates, its stretching. Right here, right now, I can tell you that I have a straight kicks Chiari malformation. That means that my brainstem is hanging down the back of my neck and it's slightly protruding. <coughs> I know this because my hands get pins and needles when this is dropped. And that fist that I try to clench is one that is really hard to do. And if I show you, my hand folds up completely different to yours. Now, all this movement and stuff that I do, any doctor will tell you that this is out of range, okay? This is not a normal movement. Now, if you... I've got a video of um, my friend's son who also has EDS and he wants to do a documentary. Um, I can't remember how old he is. I think he's about nine. Um, he wants to do a documentary. And when he sits, obviously, you see that he sits with his feet up. Yes, this is my feet. Hello to my feet. So when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want is my ankle back in place. Listen. Yeah, once we get to a certain age, yeah, once everybody gets to a certain age, they start to get aches and pains, yeah? Now, the difference with me is when I was about 13, 14, is everyone kept saying it was growing pains. It wasn't growing pains. Um, now, I don't know much about me as a baby, but what I've been saying is children like us are neglected from the age of zero to five because education funding doesn't start until five and then it's about your special needs education now this finger by the way is busted in here this knuckle is completely out okay so at the end of the day you're either physically strong or you're sick and that's how this country looks at us hence why you get sick pay so use covid for example if you catch covid or covid catches you um then obviously this country go right cool okay it's, you don't have to quarantine right now you don't have to stay in if you've got covid do you know what yeah just think of it this way mate you all just got locked down for a virus but why have they not just locked down the world to stop the guns on the streets uh, think about it but let's think about it yeah if this country really seriously wanted to lock us all down to stop people fighting it could it could. It's proved how easily it sanctions you. It does it to people on benefits. Every single person, as you saw, even me, when I got back from XR, I was pulled into the job centre because I got sanctioned because I attended a rally. Hello there, Claire. You know, if people can't see the level of control, have your children taken and go and speak to anybody to get some help. Then you will know how much you are in control. You are controlled. Because basically, if I tell you that District Judge Andrew Shaw on the, um, uh, is it June, June 9th, 17th of June, 19th of June, 2013, placed Aaron and Faith for forced adoption, which means care and placement orders for adoption. Um, and that me reading that 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 judgment back obviously is the thing in the United Nations. James Mumby has given permission for that to do that. You know, um, Professor Bowen Cowan had to get James Mumby to get permission. They couldn't, Monique couldn't have just played that in in United Nations, but she couldn't tell them that she was a personal friend. Why couldn't she tell them that Kelly Cotton was a personal friend of Monique Blakemore, that we met at Inspire, which is a Damsels in Success pro, uh, weekend course where it was about me writing my book. And um, she was setting up Autism Women Matter and obviously said to me, oh, nice to meet another uh, Aspie. And I was like, I'm not autistic. She was like, well, yeah, you are. So anyway, other people have told me I'm autistic. I've had diagnosis saying I'm autistic. Asperger's, sorry. Other people think I'm ADHD. Other people think I'm just fucking unique. I just think I'm a mum. But unfortunately, ticking the mum tick box doesn't give you a salary. 
Being a mum isn't a career. Being a mum isn't a occupation. Being a mum, being a housewife is, but you still don't get paid unless you suck his cock and bend over and take it up backwards and let him fuck the secretary. Um, you know, so we live in a world based on longevity. So this is where I agree with the sustainability bill, and I do. But while you've all been um, watching Ukraine, um, government has passed through laws that basically mean if you protest, you go to jail. No bycast, no whatever, it is just straight jail. So now you know that I stood there on David Cameron's election day with a Halt the Jive banner going, Halt, Halt, Halt the Drive, uh, Halt the Adoption Drive, talking to anybody and everybody in the way that I do, where you see the camera, but the camera wasn't there. I talk to people in exactly the same way. Who are you? What do you do? What position are you in? I want to know what you do, what power and authority you've got, and what decisions that you can help impact and change, right? Now, for me, this has always been flipping over so family comes first. The matter what it is. The matter what it is, mate. The matter what it is. You could be in the middle of a fucking surgery on someone, mate, and if your wife rings you and says the kids are A and E, mate, you go. You go. Obviously, if you're a decent person, you'll hand over to whoever it is tanking over. And obviously, if you've got life and limb person on the table, it's a bit different in it. And, and obviously, there's a moral standing. What is the most important thing to deal with that day? And this is the problem with Boris Johnson. I know how fucking difficult it is to try to think about without, ow, my neck, without having a diary. Yeah? Without having a diary. And obviously, to me, as a mother, let me just show you what is my priorities. So straight away, my priorities are... We go straight into Aaron's birthday on the 3rd of February. Then we go into Liam's birthday on the 7th of February. Then obviously Kelly completely fucked up on February. And then a pancake day, of course. And then I go into my 40 days. So these are the 40 days. So this is my 40 days of fasting and things. And then obviously we go into Faith's birthday, who will be 12. And then we step April, actually. Have I done it? Yes, I have done it. Do you know why they won't want you to see these dates either? Because if you look at the corresponding of the dates of things that are done, they're done around my kids' birthdays and my family's birthdays. And then obviously we go into Daniel's birthday, which is St. George's Day. And then mine. And I'm going to be 44 this year, okay? And the problem with birthdays and the problem with parties and don't forget Boris Johnson had his it's really bad if someone tries to throw you a, a surprise birthday and you're sort of like trying to lead a country going look sh you know we really can't do this and it's like everyone's trying to make an effort and you're trying to go Boom. um and I guarantee you he certainly wasn't celebrating he was he's, he's his hair is, is as fucked up as mine too so anyway for me I've always wanted to go to Orton Towers for my birthday book it sort it but the fact is it's the people that are not there that make it a harder day than the people there to celebrate that day with you. And same with our face birthday. Now, obviously, it wasn't first birthday, and I was going through what I was going through. And nobody actually rang me and said, Kelly, it's not face birthday today. You do know this, don't you? And people probably thought, oh, she's doing a stunt with it. And it was like, no, genuinely, I got thrown and spun into it, and it was like, bump. So then, obviously, we go into... I get all June off, all of that off. I've no personal birthdays. And then, obviously, Dean's birthday. And then Elijah's birthday. And Shiloh's birthday, which is also um, Dean's dad's birthday. But I haven't put that into my responsibilities at this particular time. And then, obviously, my dad's birthday. And my dad's birthday is the 13th of December, which is the day that Aaron and Faith were taken. And the only reason my children were taken 
was because I said to the housing officer, I don't know whether to ring my dad or not, because the last time I spoke to him, I was in Liverpool making the decision, was I coming south, was I not? And my dad was meant to ring me back and he never rang me back. And it was like, it was his birthday and I needed to use their phone. Yeah. So I was living somewhere where I would need to use their facilities. I didn't have a mobile phone myself and I would have had to have had permission to use their phone. And you have to give really good reasons. And it was like, but it's my dad's birthday. And it was like, but I didn't even have my dad's number. I had no connection to anybody. Um, I had no way of getting on my Facebook unless I got onto my laptop and went out of town and down to McDonald's and got a signal. And that was how I posted. They've got my kids, social services, I've got my kids. I literally took the laptop and went into a McDonald's and posted that. And then all of a sudden, next time I get online, I've got all of this boom, 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 boom. And it was like, what? And then I've got people in anonymous masks turning up and then I'm going into where I've got an injunction which is where my kids were and it's like people don't understand and they look at the residual so they'll look at a tree and they'll see a tree and say it's an apple tree the apples are either rotten or they're fresh and you if they're fresh you pick them and eat them and if they're rotten you leave them and unless you want to, you know, make some manure. And that's the way the world is. And they'll disable you. And the problem is, is nobody ever goes to your family and goes, Kelly's been born with this condition and it's going to mean that she's going to need to swim. So that means my dad should have been making sure that at least three times a week I was going swimming. Gymnastics would have been really good for me as long as I'd had all of the proper nutrition. Ballet would have been really good for me. Um, netball athletics the wrong things to have probably pushed me into because it's not good for my body um but there is some things that are absolutely fundamental to manage the condition that i have is incurable there's no cure for it so they say it's an incurable condition my hopes and wishes that that means that i can cure it from within if it was to do with witchy and stuff then there's a cure in it but as it stands at the moment it's something that we're born with and we die with and we die from a life expectancy is much shorter than anybody else's. Um, predominantly wouldn't tend to live past 60s. Um, and if lucky, if you, for the vascular version of it, then you ain't getting really past 40s, okay? Now, I was told I won't get past 35, and I certainly won't get past 35 without having to go back into a wheelchair. Now, as I'm sitting to you, my hip is really fucking hurting, I'm burning, my back's burning... Um, all my souvenir fluid is going completely crazy. EDS doesn't just affect our external joints, it affects our internal joints. Um, I have no earlobes. Just turning my neck then has just caused me some problems. My knees hurt. Um, my body hurts. It hurts all the time. Now, when someone's dealing with pain, there is a management plan. Now, with someone like me, that means opiates, and I refuse to take opiates. I refuse to take tramadol. I refuse to take morphine. I refuse to take any uh, aspirin, paracetamol, and all of that. Now, I'm going to be flipping back because cannabis has just been won in the Houses of Lords for people with EDS. Now, I don't believe in street cannabis because it's mixed, it's horrible, it's got shit in it. But I do believe in cannabis oil. I do believe in aloe vera. And I do believe that we are forced to live a certain way that is causing sickness for a lot of us. But my mother has it. My nan probably had it. Um, it's looking like other sides of my family on my dad's side, certainly seen, just as it looks like Dean. Is, is hypermobile, definitely. Whether EDS is another thing, hypermobility and EDS are two different things, and they do. One affects the internal, one doesn't. Some people are just flexible. Some people are just really flexible. Yeah, they can flex, they can, you know, the, you, you, you're just really fucking flexible, yeah? There's a difference, yeah? Um, these are the things that you don't see. You don't see the videos of when I'm hoovering and I'm having to hold things backwards. You don't see things when I'm cooking and I've, back you don't see when i'm driving and i've got my hand backwards um and people think this is drama and it annoys me because that's very abusive 
and I want to make it law. That instead of leaving somebody and just thinking they're, they're, they're making it up, there's a physio plan for us. And I have every legal right to have a physio here in this house, dead on time in the morning. If I was a professional dancer, I'd have that anyway. And I'd have sponsorship. But I would never be able to be a professional dancer or a skater or a professional anything because I'm not reliable. I'm not, I couldn't commit to anything. I can't even commit to my own birthdays on how I might feel on that day. And this is why even for my children as they're growing up and they're very signs, signs and symptoms of it, I don't want my children to be forced to burn out in the schedule of someone else. We don't have to be at school for nine o'clock. We're up for it. It's, it's, not what, it's not what people think. Oh, she doesn't want to get up in the morning to take her kids to school. That's not true at all. We love our time in the mornings. We love our cuddle times. Dean's out with the boys at the moment. That's where the boys are. Dean's taking the boys out and I'll take them out this afternoon. Um, and he's taken over sort of the bedtime uh, structures when he's here. Um, you know, he doesn't really want, he doesn't want to leave his family. He, he doesn't want to give up on me and the kids. He's doing everything that he can to be here, be present. And, you know, he, he, he's he got to go off soon. You know, he's, he, he's got to. He can't disappear again. You know, he disappeared from his career uh, 2015. And I know what that career is now. I didn't before. So, you know... Please, Dean, get on with your career. You, you know, you, 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 you're a wonderful, inspiring. I get it. I get it. I can't say much more about it. Anyway, I can't. I get it. I get it. So, you know, he's going to be going off and doing that. And yes, he sleeps on benches. And, and yes, he goes, travels around the way that he travels around. And, and that's something that I have to get used to. Yes, he spends a lot of time in squats. Yes, he spends a lot of time at, at, at places that most people won't go. And yes, Dean is the sort of person that, that has protected a woman from being raped in a squat. Yes, he's dragged these people out. You know, yes, they've had to deal with stuff. Yes, Dean goes up against TSG. And if you don't know what TSG is, it's it's the police with the guns. I go up against TSG. But I don't go up against TSG with a gun. For every person who is going over to Ukraine who think you're going to go and fight their war, you will be arrested under treason. So don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. You'll be arrested for treason immediately. It's an 18th century law that means that someone from another country can't pick up a gun and help somebody in another country. You, 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 people. Yeah, you either play for Manchester United or Manchester City. You don't move to Manchester City to help Manchester City get better. And you don't move to Liverpool to help Liverpool get better. It ain't like that. Yeah. You know, Now people will say, oh, they swap players all the time. It doesn't work like that. There's an 18th century law that means that you cannot go over there and fight for these people, mate. Now, can you go in there as aid and assistance? And when you go in as aid and assistance, can you defend yourself? Yes. There's no wars coming in here on Great Britain right now. The world is quite lovely and great, but yes, we are in a war. And it's as simple as that. And it would be so much easier if the leaders of the countries turned around and said, we're greedy fucking cunts, we need more gold, we need more uranium. Much of it is about the radiation uranium. So uranium is basically radiation. And that uh, radi uh, radiation, I think, it's, I can't remember if it's gamma or beta, a uh, gamma or something. Um, so, you know, they'll fight over these things. They all want it. And it's all about the price. And they want to get all these tunnels through. And it's all about permission and pricing and how much and all of this sort of stuff it's no different than Chelsea if you want to buy Chelsea get into the, the it's a negotiation if you don't want to buy Chelsea step out yeah but if you're going to buy Chelsea then be a great manager be a great leader and and, and and make them win but win what so somebody is a loser and this is the problem with the competitive world that we live in and we have to cross to the co-symbiotic creative world and that means that we come together with the leaders of our companies too by the greater horn that we 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 come together in co-symbioticness because there are civilians and we are the civilians doesn't matter if you're ex-army wife you're still a fucking civilian doesn't matter if you're trained by your father in martial arts you're still a civilian 
we don't pick up the guns and start a war with people because the problem is, is what they've done is they've gaslit people to make them flee their house and for people to fight for their fucking lives. That's no different than Kelly Cotton walking around Portsmouth with paranoia to the police officers when the police ain't chasing me. But what that does is creates resistance for the police to go, what the fuck is this woman doing? And then we've got a problem because the police are in front or other people send them to my door and they don't know what they're coming to. But at the end of the day, both people are going to protect themselves and that's what people are missing over there. You're seeing a man from Russia with grenades in his hand and everyone's saying, oh, you know, the brave Ukrainians. That man was saying, stay away from me, mate. Stay away from me. Don't come near me. I'm scared fucking shitless. I've got two grenades in it. And if you try to detain me, take me. But don't worry, they're only taking them over to Snake Island. <laughs> anyway, all the people that you think are dead, let's see them when they all come out of Snake Island, all right? See you when they all come out of Snake Island. And don't worry, if any of the five of our workers disappear, they're only be at Snake Island. But we might see them decapitated and heads off, but they'll be at Snake Island. It's not a problem. <laughs>